let's talk about how to actually perform a lung biopsy. Everything that we've discussed up until this point has gotten us ready to actually sit foot in the procedural room and actually perform this procedure. So all of the clinical context that we provided has been particularly important. Um, as uh, one of my surgical mentors has noted, um, you know, it takes about 10 years to, to perform a surgery and the next 10 years usually to learn when not to perform a surgery. So any time we sort of set foot in a room, particularly when it comes to performing a biopsy, we need to understand what are the fundamentals which we've covered thus far. So now we're sort of ready to rock and roll as it relates to performing the biopsy itself. So what I want you to do is I want you to learn these tools and the steps associated with performing a safe and effective CT guided biopsy of a lung nodule. So this is the landscape for performing a CT guided lung nodule biopsy. What we have is the interventionalist draped, gowned, the patient draped, sterilely, gowned, and what we have is the screen directly in front of the interventionalist and of course to his left, just lateral, is the bore for the CT. The patient in this particular case is legs first into the CT, and oftentimes patients are head first into the bore of the CT. It depends on the preference of the interventionalist. What we see is the screen that the interventionalist is, is using as a guide for performing the biopsy. In this particular case, he sees his needle through the lung, into the lesion of interest. And here we have a schematic identifying what this would look at anatomically, traversing the skin, the soft tissues, through the intercostal muscles, and into the biopsy. Again, what we see here is the fissure. The interventionalist would have looked through the scan, would have identified where the fissure was, and identified the fact that this lesion is sitting on top of the fissure. So in terms of his biopsy, he is ensuring that he's biopsying just in such a way where his throw, his pass, is not crossing the fissure. Because if it were to cross the fissure, we're violating not only one, two, visceral and parietal, but also another visceral and pleura, therefore increasing the risk of pneumothorax. One of the most important things that we need to understand is what is the trajectory that we are going to assume of our needle as we move through into the lungs and then into our lesion of interest. Here's a path that we might consider. Here's another path we might consider. Here's a third path that we might consider. So what would you pick? Well, I would first identify the structures of interest as a part of your checklist. What are the things that we do not want to touch? We discuss the fissure. Here we see the nice fissure something we don't want to cross, so it would make A a poor choice. Of course, A crosses from one lung, one hemithorax into another, which would be a complete no-no. The other interesting structure that we've discussed is the internal mammary artery and the internal mammary vein. We see the artery very well opacified on this arterial phase image, and this would be a structure on the right and, of course, on the left that we would not want to touch. The other thing that we want to be mindful of is the course that is through the intercostal region. We want to go intercostally and, of course, not through the bone. So what I would say is C would probably be our best choice. 